Welcome to Blade of Tech Musings, the channel dedicated to retro tech, innovation, science, and technological entertainment. The first operational flight of SpaceX's Crew Dragon spacecraft, serial number C207, is set to tentatively launch from the Kennedy Space Center on October 23rd, now that the formal certification review to assess data from the Crew Dragon's two-man test flight is underway. Although NASA and SpaceX say the Crew Dragon spacecraft performed well on its 64-day test flight, Officials wish to fully assess data from the Demo-2 mission and formally certify the Crew Dragon for regular crew rotation missions lasting up to seven months. Dubbed Crew-1, the next Dragon-2 flight will feature a four-person crew. They are spacecraft commander Mike Hopkins, pilot Victor Glover, and mission specialists Shannon Walker and Soichi Naguchi of the Japan Aerospace Exploration Agency. As before, the Dragon 2 is expected to lift off from Launch Complex 39A. A Falcon 9 rocket will serve as the launch vehicle, although the Crew Dragon capsule is designed to also be compatible with the Atlas V that is to lift the Boeing Starliner into orbit. Crew 1 will dock with the International Space Station on October 24th. All four astronauts are expected to participate in a six-month mission on the orbiting research complex. SpaceX is under contract with NASA for at least six crew rotation missions to the space station through 2024. NASA has committed more than $3 billion in nine years to SpaceX for development, testing, and operational flights of the commercial Crew Dragon spacecraft. For a comparison, one space shuttle flight costs $1.5 billion, and there were four to five shuttle flights per year. The Crew-1 flight was originally scheduled for August 30th, but delays in assessing the Demo-2 mission data and the Dragon-2 capsule, as well as the upcoming Russian Soyuz MS-17 launch scheduled for October 14th, required that NASA push out the Crew-1 launch date. The Soyuz MS-17 crew will dock with the ISS a few hours after launch, joining Station Commander Chris Cassidy and Russian flight engineers Anatoly Avenishim and Ivan Wagner for a week-long crew handover. Cassidy and the two astronauts were the crewmates for the Demo-2 astronauts Bob Benkin and Doug Hurley. The Crew-1 and Soyuz MS-17 crews will make up the forthcoming Expedition 64 long-duration mission on the International Space Station. The mission is scheduled to begin in October 2020 with the undocking and departure of Soyuz MS-16 and is scheduled to end on April 18, 2021 with the departure of Soyuz MS-17. The main engineering task of Expedition 64 is to bring power to the Bartolomeo scientific platform that is bolted to the side of the European Space Agency's Columbus Laboratory module. The Columbus module was lifted to the ISS by the shuttle Atlantis in the STS-122 mission in 2007, where it was attached to the starboard hatch of the Harmony module. The Bartolomeo platform was lifted to the ISS by SpaceX's C-112 Dragon 1 freighter in March of 2020 and was connected to Columbus a month later. However, the power conduit cannot be installed by a robotic arm. It must be installed during an EVA. As the sole astronaut on the ISS during the Expedition 63 mission, Cassidy could not perform an EVA, and the one opportunity for such during the Demo-1 visit was used to replace more mission-critical battery modules. The platform is intended to accept modules that perform microgravity research in vacuum rather than inside the ISS itself a secondary payload on a spacecraft, or installed in a satellite lifted into orbit. Presumably, the advantage of such an arrangement is that the modules can be removed after long durations and returned to Earth with little risk to their contents, a prospect not as likely on the side of a spacecraft or in re-entry in a hardened, deorbited satellite. Expedition 64 is also expected to begin working down the lengthy list of station maintenance tasks that have been built up in the U.S. section since the retirement of the shuttle fleet as well as perform the usual laundry list of life sciences and space environment observational experiments. The larger expedition crew size will greatly facilitate tasking. Both the Dragon 2 and the Starliner are rated by NASA for four astronauts, making crew transport more economical and practical than during the nine-year hiatus, when the U.S. agency had to rely on Roscosmos to deliver astronauts to the ISS. The Soyuz MS capsule is rated for only three cosmonauts. The Dragon 2 is rated by SpaceX commercially for seven astronauts, although it has yet to perform such a mission. The Starliner is also commercially rated by Boeing for seven astronauts, although their crew capsule has yet to perform a manned mission in any capacity. 
The next three U.S. spacecraft scheduled to visit the ISS after the Crew-1 mission are freighters for resupply. A Northrop Grumman Cygnus commercial supply ship set for liftoff on an Antares rocket September 29th from Wallops Island, Virginia. The Cygnus cargo freighter will arrive at the station October 3rd with several tons of experiments, crew provisions, and other hardware. Another Cygnus resupply mission will be launched in February of 2021. A SpaceX Dragon 2 freighter is scheduled to launch from Cape Canaveral Air Force Station's Launch Complex 40 in November of 2020. That mission will be SpaceX's 21st cargo launch to the space station, but the first using the Dragon 2 chassis to be deployed as a cargo ship. The Dragon 2 is automated, as was the Dragon 1, so the fact that it is crewless is not particularly noteworthy. The next month is expected to feature the second test flight of the Boeing Starliner, serial number 2, which, like the first test flight, is planned to reach the ISS. It is likely some freight will be carried in the capsule. Following the SpaceX resupply mission and the Starliner test flight will be the Crew-2 launch in March of 2021 in the C-206 capsule using the Demo-2 mission. It will be the first reuse of a U.S. spacecraft since the STS flight of Shuttle Atlantis in 2011, which was in its 33rd mission. The entire shuttle fleet was retired after STS-135 returned to Earth. The Crew-2 astronauts will join the Crew-1 astronauts on the ISS for a week after which the Crew-1 will return on C-207 to Cape Canaveral, weather permitting. The next U.S. crewed mission to the ISS will be in July of 2021, with the arrival of the Boeing Starliner in its first manned test flight. The final U.S. mission for 2021 is planned to be a Dragon 2 capsule manned by astronauts from commercial company Axiom Space in October 2021. Axiom is training its own astronauts in order to staff its own space station, starting with a module attached to the ISS, in 2024 to 2026, and then detached as its own station after 2027. Russia plans on relieving the Soyuz MS-17 ISS crew in April of 2021 and the Soyuz MS-18 ISS crew in December of 2021. A Progress M rocket is scheduled to lift a new module for the ISS in July of 2021, and three Progress M freighters are scheduled for ISS resupply in May, August, and December of 2021. What do you think of the Dragon 2 capsule and the U.S. activities at the International Space Station? Was SpaceX essential for NASA's return to manned space exploration, or was it better to extend the service life of the shuttle fleet? Let us know by dropping a comment below. We hope you enjoyed this 30-second video short about space and tech on the BTM channel's one-year anniversary on YouTube. If so, click that like button. Not a subscriber yet? Clicking the subscribe button and the bell notification icon will help both our YouTube standing and keep you informed when new episodes are released. Links to our previous episodes can be found below. Stay connected by occasionally checking our Instagram feed, where we post content from our upcoming episodes and from episodes past that you may have missed. Make sure you follow our Twitter account, where all new episodes are announced. And finally, join us on our Facebook page, where we cover current news and events related to channel content. Thanks for watching.